Okay. Um, can everybody hear me? Can anybody hear me? Anybody? Uh, okay, great. Marcus hears me. Tony hears me. All right. Looks like we're going then. Okay. Great. Well, uh, thanks everybody for uh, coming to this uh, next presentation, um, which is the uh, the viewers and open simulator panel. So, uh, with me today, I'm very pleased that um, I'm going to have to thank them for taking the time to be on this panel. So, in fact, I'm sitting in the hot seat here because uh, I'm the one with the actual presentation slides, but then I will be moderating uh, the panel. So, everybody's decided to sit on. Oh, okay. Most people decide to sit on one side. Um, so furthest to your left is, uh, and, and do forgive me if I get any of this wrong, is uh, Jessica Lyon of uh, the Firestorm viewer, who is the, I believe, the uh, the project manager or the overall manager of the viewer. Um, and sitting next to her is Cinder Biscuits, also of um, the Firestorm viewer, who manages a lot of the uh, the open simulator aspects um, of of the support they have for open sim in, in kind of their viewer versions. And next to her is. Uh, Latif uh, Khalifa, who, uh, as well as being very heavily involved, I believe, in uh, Singularity, um, is also, of course, uh, one of the uh, one of the core developers of the LibOMV library, which both uh, OpenStim and other projects uh, kind of use a lot for uh, protocol um, for the protocol, and of uh, and of Radagast, the uh, well, I, I guess formerly TextView, but also uh, recently of a lot of graphical components. And next to him. Uh, who, for some reason, okay, bizarrely, I don't have a name tag for you, but I'm guessing, uh, guessing that is Liru. Um, she is also of the, um, also of the Singularity viewer, who uh, who does a, a lot of work, uh, a lot of work on that particular viewer. Sorry, I just lost my, uh, I just lost lost one of my, uh, one of my pages here. For uh, actually, if you give me a second, I've got so many tabs open in some of these uh, systems, and I'm sure people are familiar. With that syndrome, but yes, yeah, sorry, uh, yeah, uh, Liru fears and or fires. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Also known as uh, Inusoto Kanya, um, who's been working for for, open, for Singularity uh, for on sorry on the Singularity Vera uh, for two years, but you've been using virtual worlds for quite a bit longer and doing a lot of work on localization uh, support and monitoring issues. And finally, if I actually rotate my camera the right way. Uh, sitting over there is uh, Nikki Perrion, who, uh, who of course is, um, is 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 one of the core developers on both the Koku viewer and before that, as many of you are familiar with, I'm sure, with the Imprudence viewer. And he's uh, he's retired from the U.S. Army and ABB, and and the Koku viewer is one of his uh, one of his hobbies. Um, and I must admit, it's uh, it's a lot of work, and it's always very impressed what he comes up, up with uh, on that viewer. So basically, the format of this panel is that I'm going to run through, first of all, a few questions that are thought up, which I think are going to be interesting in terms of, uh, to some extent, oriented towards OpenSim, of course, but also, but also about what, uh, what kind of the people on this panel see as the future. And then I'm going to open it up to general Q&A from the floor. So the way it's going to work is that Probably the best thing you could uh, you can ask questions if you like during the talk and and people on stage are, are very welcome to respond. But we can also uh, wait until the end and I'll, I'll ask for questions at the end and then we'll deal with them there. So right, okay. Let me refocus on on my slide for a second. So I'm probably so what I'm going to do actually is go to each of you in turn and and either. Everybody can answer. If somebody just wants to let somebody else still on the same view of project answer, then that's absolutely fine as well. Yes, and I should have put that slide up, actually, <laughs> showing who people were. Sorry. Um, right, so I'm just going to wait for this slide to appear. Okay. So the first thing really actually is uh, introduction. So... If I start from, well, apart from all the, what people actually want to say a little bit about their viewer and, and kind of like the open sim aspects of it. So if I start right on my, on the left side from the audience point of view, which is uh, Jessica, uh, if you could say a few words about that, please, that'd be great. Um, yeah, sure. So uh, basically, 
uh, Phoenix is being used quite a bit in OpenSim uh, early on, and um, when we started up Firestorm, we were I was contacted by quite a few people, in fact, um, and a lot of educationals that uh, were moving over to OpenSim, saying that um, you know Firestorm works really good in OpenSim, but you know it's got this bug or that bug and the other bug, and um, as well at the same time there was uh, some questionability as to the future of Second Life, and as most people know, our primary focus has always been with Second Life. Um, but we're all about options, and um, so I wanted to um, bring a focus on Firestorm into OpenSim to give uh, Second Life users the option for uh, switching or moving to or just transferring back and forth from OpenSim to Second Life. And um, so we brought on uh, Armin, many of you know Armin, um, initially as our OpenSim developer, uh, but his, really, his life got very busy. And um, so then we brought in Cinder here, who is practically a hero, uh, I think, for us in uh, OpenSim compatibility. And um, so we've brought a focus into OpenSim as well now so that we can, uh, it's, it's about options, right? It's about giving people a choice to use OpenSim or use the viewer wherever they want, whatever grid they want. And um, I don't know what else I could say about that. Okay, great. Um, Cinder, is there anything you would uh, like to add to that? Um, I don't know. Okay, no problem. Uh, Latif? Sorry, is it Latif? Am I saying that right? Yes, it's it's right. Uh, so single <coughs> singularity viewer is uh, is a viewer based on a Linde lab code, and it's using the familiar good old V1 interface. But most of the guts have been since replaced with the more recent code. So we have stuff like uh, mop and uh, and mesh and all the latest goods that come from that way. Singularity has a small development team like most open source projects and uh, it has only one version there is no specific version for open sim since linden lab wouldn't license how can other things to us anyway uh, with regards to open sim uh, we have a long and good history of cooperation with uh, with open sim grids and the open sim protocol itself the the not the protocol the people who develop open sim and that that support includes uh, the standard grid manager with a grid info protocol for easy addition of the sims and we have some things that are being developed <coughs> like our octopus system which allows the simulators to add custom menu items and custom dialogues to the viewer so they can you can have a user interface modified by the simulator itself we also have uh, support for, uh, for, uh, for example, a map in hypergrid mode, and we are adding uh, in, in cooperation with the OpenSIM development team uh, things like export permission and uh, <clears throat> and other things that are that are going to be part of the future uh, protocol extensions. So, so that would be a short intro into into Singularity and OpenSIM. Great, thank you. Um, Liru, do you have anything to add? Is there anything you'd like to add? Um, I'm not really sure Latif really covered it all. I, yeah, I guess I don't have anything to add. Okay, great. And uh, finally, Nikki, if, uh, if you'd like to give a little introduction to, to Kakua. Okay, well, Kakua came about uh, about 18 months ago, when through a lack of interest, I just uh, tried to fill a vacuum and start developing it. Uh, at that time, we tried to stay close to the second life viewer and add open sim capabilities as they came about. And I expected that I would not be able to stay close to second life for very long, but that's proven not true. We are still within weeks of uh, an upgrade on the Second Life viewer. have that into Kahua. But we do spend a good bit of time on testing within the OpenSim community. And 
to their credit, the open sim users seem much more technically oriented and in or into diagnosing problems. And that may just be from survival. I'm not sure. Okay, great. I'm, and I think that actually leads on to, uh, I think it does anyway. Uh, so it leads on to, uh, well, really, we've already addressed this. So to at least the first part, uh, or however, I don't know. Actually, no, this is the first question. So I'm, I'm getting a bit at odds and ends there. Um, so actually, if I just go back the other way. So Nikki, I mean, how much do you think your viewer is used of Open Simulator? And, and I think you've already kind of said this. I mean, how do the users differ, if at all, compared with, uh, and I don't mean this in any kind of discriminatory way. I'm just kind of interested in whether there is a different flavor of, of community, whether it's more, as you say, more technically oriented, for instance. Uh, is there anything you, you'd like to say about that? OK. Uh, we recently pulled in the uh, automatic update version from uh, Second Life. And so they're on a different website for downloading than what the other all the general population uses. So right now, based on the downloads, those that are in the automatic update system versus those that just respond to a blog entry, I'd say about two thirds of our users are open sim. Okay, that's uh, that's quite a high proportion, I, I guess, because uh, you've already you've always you've I mean for quite a long time you've had a, quite a concentration on open sim and quite a lot of support there. So that's an interesting proportion. So I, I, I don't know, Liru or, or Latif, would you kind of care to talk about that? Well, the, uh, uh, the users, the, as I said, oh, I'm sorry. You mean about the usage of, of uh, Singularity on OpenSIM grids? Yes. Yeah, well, I think, uh, you know, starting a few years ago, imprudence seemed to be uh, the, the most used viewer there. And they are trying to pick up the sort of torch that that viewer left because a lot of people like this interface, but imprudence hasn't been maintained in the meanwhile. You know, people want stuff like mesh and Mediana Prim and stuff. So, so they are trying to fit in that role where you can get all the latest and features but with the familiar interface and stable and, and so on so so that would be and i think we are having a, a lot of uh, success in that area we are also heavily uh, concentrating lately on uh, the content uh, portability which i think is very important for open sim users so you can export and import your creations from all grades you know respecting proper permissions and we have been uh, recently adding uh, stuff like uh, Colada export, which has been taken really positively by the OpenSIM community. Okay, great. Uh, and Liru, and if you did, if there is anything you want to add, please do, please do well. I, I please do jump in. Um, but I'm sure you're already in the text as well, which is which is great. Um, so I don't know, Nikki, did you want to say something more on uh, on that? No, I just misunderstood the intro. Okay, sorry. Um, so, uh, Cinder and uh, and Jessica, um, I mean, would you say? Uh, how, I mean, how much do you think OpenSim is used of your view? I guess for you, and I'm just kind of guessing here that it's probably a lower, a fairly low proportion, since you do have a lot of uh, kind of Second Life users. But maybe I'm wrong. And and, and do, would you think that the community is different? Is there more of an emphasis on? Because I know there's a lot of education interest, for instance, in modifying viewers and having kind of simplified stuff, or or is it kind of the same? Well, we've had. Uh, I found that a lot of. Um, first of all, we don't keep metrics on on how many users we have in OpenSim. We don't have any way of of collecting that other than our downloads. As as those of you that know us know, we have two separate downloads because of uh, the Havoc licensing issue through Linen Lab. Um, but we also understand that there are a lot of SL users who use our OpenSim download in Second Life as well. So even that's not a good um, measurement. Um, as far as how many users go, we don't really use that. We use that more as a, a measurement of uh, how well we're doing, uh, how well we are um, addressing the uh, issues that our users have. Um, and uh, so it, it's, 
it's difficult to say. Uh, I tend to think that the more people we have, perhaps we're doing a better job than we were, say, last month or last year, that kind of a thing. Um, I know that we have... Uh, I know there are a few grids that use Firestorm exclusively. I know that there are a lot of educationals who use Firestorm, um, and um, and that's that, you know, tells me what we're doing a good job and we're fulfilling their needs, and um, and you know, there's a big future. We're still working, still pushing forward. Uh, there's a lot of compatibility issues still to come. I've seen a lot of questions coming in in local chat, and I think all of our viewers here on the panel can answer the same thing as yes most likely yes and yes we're working on that and yes we plan on fixing that <laughs> it's just a matter of uh, a matter of time as far as you know open sim users compared to second life users I think um, I think open sim users are more of a cutting-edge kind of group of people who um, are willing to explore uh, greater possibilities and also who don't like to be tied down by uh, say rules set out by a big company like uh, Linen Lab for example. Uh, one of the nice things about Open Simulator is that it is open source server side and um, there are a lot of orgs, I mean just watching the keynote uh, from this morning there's a lot of companies who are taking great advantage, doing amazing things with the platform and um, so I think that uh, the, the users differ quite a bit. People in Second Life, I think, generally um, are there for the economy, there for shopping, there for uh, socializing. And I think, on average, people who are uh, open sim specific um, are, are more exploratory and um, more wanting to explore the technology. Yes, I think it's one of these. Uh, I think it's one of these things where because it is kind of, and I, I, there is disagreement on this. I still regard OpenSim as alpha. I mean, it's a really, it's not as complex as the view. It's only a third of the code lines, but it's still a pretty complex piece of software in its own right. And it's kind of, you know, it's one of these development things where it's filling in, filling in the blanks for a lot of. I mean, anyway, I said this earlier, and I, I do regard it as filling in a lot of the, the Linden Lab kind of blanks. And when you do that, you get a certain kind of result. Um, where you do get a lot of incomplete features and stuff, which you know you'd expect to work, but doesn't, and that kind of thing. So, but on the whole, it's actually quite interesting how many people are uh, actually say when you're talking rubbish, Justin. It actually works quite well. Which, when you can see all the problems, you don't tend to think. I don't know. So sorry, I don't know. I kept leapt in there. I don't know if you had anything to add, to Cinder, um, about that. Um, no, not really. Okay. Well, so I'm going to move on, and if anybody on the panel does want to say something extra, please do interrupt me. Um, so on question two here uh, is a question I guess I was kind of interested in um, generally, because I was kind of interested in what the kind of blockers are. But starting from really from uh, Jessica again from that side, um, well, actually, no, I should kind of alter this, shouldn't I? I shouldn't start with the same person every time. I should actually start, this time I'm going to start with uh, you, Latif, actually. Um, so what do you think uh, would make it easier for your viewer to work with OpenSim and alternate grids? What could, what could be done better either by the project, and of course you know, I mean you know how it is, it's another open source project, it's kind of anarchic, it's not, there's no central control, but you know, people do step up and try and address things which are deficient, or do you think there's kind of things that even grids could be doing which would help, help the viewers? Uh, but as you know, uh, we have a very good cooperation with the grids. For example, uh, uh, Singularity is a base for the Avination viewer, which is which is also rooted in <coughs> Singularity code. What what can Open Sim project do? I think we we do need to have some sort of coordination between not only Open Sim developers and the viewer developers, but between viewer developers among different projects and that in order to implement these protocol extensions. And I've been listening to your talk uh, yesterday where you have said that the viewer project is really huge and even though many people say we should have an open sim viewer and we should break up with Linden Lab once and for all, I don't think those people really realize how big the viewer project is and what would we take. So we should continue to, to you know, use Linden resources in that way, the stuff that they open source, but it should not limit us 
to adding uh, extra features and extensions to the protocol. And this is where I think we, we should have some sort of uh, RFC uh, a repository for the protocol extensions. So, for example, things that we are adding like uh, support for a map in hyperbrid or the export permission or the octopus. We, I think we should have a, a tiny corner on the wiki, perhaps open sim wiki, where we can document the stuff that we have implemented and where proposals could be made. I hate committees and, and, and really formalized groups which which is why I think the wiki would be the perfect format to implement to 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 document what we have implemented. So so people that are interested, okay, we want to put uh, support in Firestorm so the the map works in hypergrid. We could point them to the page. Okay, this is the fields that are done, and this is the patch where we have implemented in in Singularity. And you are welcome to take it into into Cocoa or Firestorm or any other review patch. Okay. Um, yeah, great. No, I, I, I don't like groups either. I'm, I think I made the point yesterday that sometimes people seem to sit, I, I don't know, they're sitting down and trying to come up with a protocol before you actually have implemented anything. It's just kind of a little crazy to me, especially in a space like this. But at the same time, you do need some kind of coordination. I don't know how that comes about, because to be, to be honest, I don't think, we don't really even have great, that great coordination. I mean, from my point of view, and I think other people might disagree, but I'm not sure we have fantastic coordination even within OpenSim, right? We have this this thing where, and I think I think I might get a lot of disagreement here, but we have this thing where somebody comes along with an interesting idea and they and they just implement it, right? There's a there's not a really a cultural saying on the mailing list first. Well, I'd I'd like to do this. It's more kind of well, there it is. There's the code, and uh, and you know, <laughs> you know what now kind of thing. I, I yes, I but don't know. For, st for stuff like the export permission, the Melanie implemented it on OpenSim, and and uh, Liru has implemented with uh, help from Melanie on Singularity end. And it would be really stupid to, to have uh, other uh, viewer teams re-implement the same thing and look uh, through the code for uh, how it's implemented stuff. It would be really nice just to have one portal on the wiki where we could just document here are the things that are extensions to the protocol. This is what they do and this is uh, what how they were implemented. Yeah, and, and that of course would rely on on server on the uh, us implement uh, uh, documenting this as well, so I, I think it'll have to go around. But I'm just so I just like to uh, I just like to uh, go to then uh, go to then on the other side on Nikki quickly and say, well, um, so so what do you think about this question? Do I mean do you have anything to say on about what um, Latif said about this? I uh, yes, I'd like to see some standardization on the uh, export. And how it should be handled. There uh, seems to be two parties is that the large commercial grids want to restrict exports and the smaller just getting started grids would like to get content any way they could. So that's a natural conflict. Uh, as far as what uh, OpenSim could do, I think it should try to do some standardization to the uh, Second Life viewer. For instance, script standardization or something as uh, resing a prim and sitting on it and being able to sit in the same manner as you would on either either grid i think those things would if you could get the standardization up and the contra the people would come more readily to op open sim grids yeah no it is a it is an issue and i think partly it's because we are we do end up using code which has been front so I, we we use early code and early code kind of works, but then the kind of the strange little bugs which are in it almost get codified. I mean, I'm sure you're used to seeing this in other kind of contexts. The kind of the way the odd ways that things work end up being more difficult to change, which is why I'm I'm, I'm kind of keen not to not to try and say OpenSim is too mature because it, it really isn't to me anyway. Um, and I really or I, I shouldn't start, sit here and just say what all my views kind of this. I'm asking you the questions, but. You know, I, I think it's a difficult thing because we are dealing with a lot of buggy software and there's like, well, you want to correct this, but that's going to break people's existing scripts. And sometimes I think you, you do have to go ahead and do this, which, which is why I'm not keen on saying that OpenSim is really that mature and that's one of my reasons. Anyway, I'd just like to ask, ask Jessica the same and Jessica and Cinder the same thing then. I mean, uh, what, would, what response would you give to that or to the question? I'd have to uh, mirror what Nikki and Latif have both said. Um, you know, 
uh, cooperation through communication, documentation, collaboration. Um, these are all keys to uh, to being able to work. The, the trouble is, Open Simulator people have to understand that um, at least the three of us, uh, the three viewers here up on stage right now, are trying to stay compatible with two different platforms, which are in some ways. Um, going in different directions on us and that makes it difficult for us to maintain one or the other or both and it would be great like Nikki said it would be fantastic if we could get some standardization so that that task it's one less thing we have to worry about um, and that way we can put our, our focus on um, new features that uh, you know OpenSim may be coming out with as well as keeping up with for example Linen Lab and Second Life and um, so I couldn't agree more with with um, with Latif in regard to you know documentation of wiki would be quite useful, um, and coming up with some kind of standard universal universality that that we can all sort of operate from, and this way we also remain compatible with each other as well. Yes, yeah, I think you know having the second I fear does effectively kind of act a little bit like that, and and. Certainly, I don't think I'm wrong in saying that the OpenSim project does strive to be more more compatible with Second Life. That is the aim. It's not the aim is certainly not to be incompatible. Of course, that causes you start to get into difficulties when you're trying to do something different, and that kind of conflicts with what the second right, squeeze right. into the Second Life protocol. But I mean, definitely our aim is to be compatible because I think we really, really do recognise the value of that. Um, so I'm just going to move on then to our final question. The final question I have prepared here. which is really a very general question. Um, and you can answer this really in any way you see fit, but it's basically, how do you see things evolving with respect to your view and virtual world systems? Uh, and by that, I mean, uh, do you think these things are going to... Because I, I will talk about survivability. I'm, I'm kind of the, the warrior of the thing, if you like. I'm always trying to look, well, what, what is the future and what, what can we realistically do? And, and how do you think, see these things? Do you, think, do you see a continued evolution in virtual world systems along these lines, or do you think you know, this is going to be a lot like a lot of other systems. Something better is going to come along, which learns maybe learns the lessons from what we have here, and actually, kind of, there will be a renewal. Do you think this is these kind of things can be very long lived? So, if I pose that first to, uh, if I pose that first to Nikki, what do you think about that? Well, I think, of course, uh, technology moves so fast. There's going to be something that we're, that's going to be better in six months or two years from now. But we have to be prepared to, to change with that technology. Uh, the viewers seem to be adding more and more stuff, especially from the Second Life with materials and things like that. And it's, that keeps going and going and going. I wouldn't have imagined they would have had uh, four major feature ads within a year's time. That seems a pretty pretty quick pace to me. Right. Okay, and uh, and Jessica uh, and Cinder, do you what would you kind of what would you like to say on that? It's very difficult to predict, isn't it? Um, as Nikki said, everything things change so quickly, and and breakthroughs um, seem to be coming out more and more frequently. And um, you know, like Nikki said, it with with in regards to Second Life, you know, they've just come out with uh, several big enhancements to the system. Uh, to the platform, at least in, in to their platform, and and in fact, OpenSim is keeping out quite nicely. Um, and I, there's a little birdie that tells me there's quite a bit more in the pipeline uh, coming to Second Life within this year, even, um, and certainly within the next 12 months, uh, we can expect to see some some more big breakthroughs, um, which um, I, I don't know what they are yet. I know there's still more appearance um, things coming down the pipeline. And uh, so it's very difficult to tell, really. Watching the keynote this morning um, and some of the ways that the Open Sim platform is being utilized for uh, education and um, and even city planning, you know, that's that's brilliant. That's absolutely genius. And uh, so, how do you predict what's coming in the future? Um, really difficult to say because it's all in the mind of the creator who who come up with the ideas. And um, I'm perpetually flattered just flat and leveled by by some of the um, uses that have been coming out. It's I think it's fantastic. 
Cinder, did you have anything to add? Because, I mean, being our, our, our main dev, uh, she's the technical side for Firestorm, especially in OpenSim. No. Developers, there are a few words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some, yeah. Some of us talk too much. Probably is is, is probably how it what it comes down to. Um, so so finally, Latif. I mean, what do you think might? Def- I mean, as as Jessica says, it is very hard to predict the future. Maybe this is kind of an unfair question. I, I guess I'm really, maybe I'm really almost asking for speculation, which is there's no shortage of speculation around. Um, but what do you think might the future might hold for these systems? Do you think they're going to be long lived, or do you think something better might come along, or, or, or you know, what what other things are kind of more important than that? I know that you always say that you regard OpenSIM to be alpha, and I think. If you need any proof that it's not and that has come a long way, it's, it's this very conference. I'm very impressed with what you are able to achieve on completely open source stack. As for the future, I know many people want uh, to have, a, they think a downloading viewer is the hardest thing in the world and installing mm-hmm. it is hard and it should be done on the web. But I don't see in the immediate future a move in that direction. It's uh, it's uh, I, certainly in the next five years. I don't think you will be able to achieve anything uh, that's achievable in standalone application like a viewer today. You, even though we have seen yesterday Pixie viewer and stuff, but I've been testing a lot of these new technologies on the web and attempt to make it easier for the end user. But I don't see that happening in the next five years, and and predicting. F- you know, more than that is is uh, is very difficult to say. As Jessica said, uh, Linden Lab is uh, you know has turned on turbo on their uh, viewer development, and we will have a hard time you know keeping up with them with all the new features, both on the viewer uh, side and on the simulator side. But we'll do our best. Mm-hmm. I think there's also a bit of a balance that that uh, at least with. Linden Lab has their balance, and we'll leave them aside. But as far as open sim and, and viewer development on our end, is uh, as Nikki said, the limitations of the user's computers. And as uh, technology evolves, as the platform is advanced and features are added, uh, things like materials, for example, um, have a heavier requirement on the viewer itself. And so. I think Open Simulator and certainly Linen Lab should, I don't know that they will, but they should weigh out and balance um, the advancement of that technology to not alienate and eliminate your, you know, users who are on a smaller budgets. And yeah. um, I, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, I, I think this is definitely one of the challenges because of course there's something like Open Sim, or at least certainly the way this project is structured, it's much more anarchic. There's no you know, there's no central planning. So if somebody yeah. were to introduce these kind of heavy things, it it becomes I don't know. I, I to be honest, I would still be I would still say that with our kind of approach of conflict conflict hell and dot any hell to everything, that you would ultimately be able to turn things down to actually be uh, simulated options. side at least. Yes, options. I mean, maybe that's not a perfect solution because then you get fragmentation of what you're doing and everything becomes enormously more complex. I don't know how far one can really go of that, but you know, the, I think open. You know, as you know, open source projects have ways of responding to this kind of things, and things come out for it. It might be a, a kind of a messier thing, but I think interesting things can happen. So I, the, we have, we still got to have a good um, fifteen minutes here. So I'm actually going to open up and take questions from the floor here. Um, so I'm probably going to do the cut off. Uh, well, well, actually, um, there have been quite a few questions going out in local. Yeah, so actually, is there anything any of you would really like to kind of actually speak about? Anything you've seen, or I can take something up myself. Okay. Um, so I guess one of the, uh, and this is probably an unfair question, is people always go on about me, and we came up today, and I didn't blame them, of course, uh, with regards to the hypergrid. There's this, yeah, 4096, thanks to us, this bug, um, where if you teleport, and arguably teleporting across a map in a hypergrid is kind of a f- funny kind of thing. But if you kind of teleport any further than 4,096 regions, uh, you end up with a graphical mess on the other side. And 
it, 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 it's very difficult to know with this thing. I mean, it sounds like the kind of thing which is going to be some kind of protocol issue almost. There's some limitation there, and then that feeds through to some bad 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 information on the graphics side and screws up. I mean, does anybody have kind of like an idea what's happening there? or uh, uh, and, and these kind of things, sorry. I, I didn't really have an understanding how how serious people find this problem. And now that I know, I, I think we can both, Justin and me, we can both look into on both ends what's happening and investigate and hopefully fix it. Yeah. I, I'm right. not familiar with that issue either. Cinder, did you know about this? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I think this goes back to um, the whole uh, communication, cooperation, collaboration, documentation kind of thing. Yeah. It, it would be really useful if, if we all had um, a shared uh, medium that we can uh, all use and communicate through. Um, in regards to issues like this, I mean, this this sounds to me like it may be half and half server and viewer side. I could be wrong. I usually am, but yeah, and I, I, it's one of these things where if it was really something one sided or the other, you'd almost expect it to be fixed. It's the kind of thing that makes you think, well, protocol in some way is being involved because that's hard to hard to fix. It's not a simple bug fix, as you know, when you get down to that level. And I just like to say actually um, that if anybody does want to coordinate things through. The open sim wiki they are definitely more than welcome and i know that might be a bit discriminatory against because i know there are a few other open source kind of server branches and forks and other projects out there um and the open sim wiki does tend to be very open sim focused but i don't think i don't see any reason why there can't be a general kind of discussion about protocols or, or documentation of, of kind of cross-system issues on there so I don't. I. I don't think that'd be a problem. Although I think it might make other people uncomfortable. So maybe. Maybe another venue is better. But certainly the Opusim Wiki. I think would be more than happy for that, for instance, to be used for this kind of stuff. Um, right. So if you want to have another question, you want to shout it out now because I'm. Don't know how much further. Okay. So I'm going to go for neocortex. Actually, I'm going to go for the 3D stuff. Right. I mean. Uh, there is actually a view out there, I think, Control Alt Studio, and I haven't tried it yet, because I, I actually do have an Oculus Rift uh, around. I just have so little time to actually do anything. And uh, uh, But it's kind of a, an, a very interesting kind of immersive kind of environment, because I'm very interested in, in immersion and that kind of thing. Um, so do you envisage a future where viewers will, or your viewer, or any viewers will end up supporting more of these kind of 3D devices like the Oculus and maybe like, like the Leap Motion, for instance? And I don't know... Yeah, please, uh, I, I think it'd be fair to say uh, we'll all have the same answer. <laughs> I mean, we're trying to evolve with the technology as well, and if there's uh, really good tech coming out, which the Oculus seems to be, uh, I think certainly we're interested in adopting it. Uh, Control Alt Studio, it'll be pro possibly easier for us since Control Alt Studio is already based on on uh, the Firestorm codebase, and. Um, and I'm still trying to get a hold of <laughs> that guy. Um, but He's in the it, audience. What's that? Oh, is, oh, is he here? Yeah, Stratkin's here. Oh, you're awesome. Wherever you are, if you're in the audience, I want to talk to you after. Um, so, yeah, I mean, as technology evolves, I think it's safe to say we're all going to evolve with it. Um, it's just a matter of, in our case specifically, because our focus still is uh, in Second Life, that's where we, we have the abundance of our users. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have to look at, um, we have to consider things like complexity of, of maintenance with uh, the Linen Lab code as it comes in. We have to look at uh, the demand. It, how much demand is there for Oculus right now? How many people have an mm -hmm. Oculus device? Mm -hmm. And if we implement this into Firestorm, is it going to affect the stability for those people who don't use or have an Oculus, for example? So there's a lot of things that come into play. Um, it's really just a matter of when, not a matter of if. Okay, anybody else want to uh, make a response to uh, that question? As yeah, as, uh, as Jessica says, it might be pretty, you know, obviously one would kind of support technologies as they come along, and if they're popular enough, but, you know, it is a question of, of, of actually having the code. Well, we've got Strachan. Um, I'm wor I've been working with Strachan on his um, Oculus stuff in his viewer. Well, okay, great. 
I should, yeah, it'd be great to talk to uh, Strachan later on. Um, right. So, does anybody else have a have a question they'd like to they'd like to ask the panel if they want to put it in the general chat? I know we're now talking about a uh, voting tracker, uh, which I was. I, I, I don't know if there's people actually interested in looking at it. I think it's great. I'm just, I don't know. We had one before, and and I'm always wary of having a have track of people can vote on, but nobody's actually going to do anything about it. <laughs> which seems rather pointless to me, but maybe that's just me. Um, yeah. Any other any other questions, or I can, or, or from the stream? Did any anything come through from the stream? Yeah, one of the things for a 496 bug is you'll first have to disable the, the thing I put on to actually stop people teleporting more than that, which some people think is, is a silly thing to do. I, well, actually, maybe that's a bit strong, but I don't know. I don't, I don't like random, bizarre graphical glitches. Um, okay, so Marcus has a question. I, I guess it would be the question is, do you... And I know some of you do, because I know a couple of you... Have, um, I mean, Jessica, you and Cinder have come from the LF grid, for instance. I see that from the hype grid thing. Um, so do you, and I think this is probably, the answer is probably yes, I mean, do you use Go and Open Sim Worlds a lot yourself, or or, or do you mainly, I, I guess, work on the code rather than actually going well? I, I don't know. Um, it, in my case, I, I don't get, I get in Open Sim about as frequently as I get in Second Life. I just don't have <laughs> the time as much. Second Life is mostly now just I log in for meetings, charity things, and whatnot. Cinder works very closely with Open Sim, though. Yeah, but I spend more time in Open Sim than Second Life. I usually over um, on Little Phil Grid. Right. Yes. Anybody else? Uh, anybody else want to add anything? I do a, a good bit of testing in Open Sim, but I would say uh, probably half of my time. But most of the time, it's just go in, see if it works, do a little bit of test, and go out or go in for a meeting. Yeah, yeah, I must admit, it's the same same for me. I'm practically always, if I go in world, I'm going to meet a bug sooner or later, and then I'm going to have to try and do something about it. Um, right, so I think Mike has a question, and I think this probably relates a bit to the code. I mean, because I've heard, and I don't haven't done a lot at all on the viewer code, I, I've only really looked to try and work out some bugs from the viewer side, but do you think there's a chance of a plugin system for viewers to uh, support extensions, or is that... I don't know. I'm putting my own spin on this. So maybe I shouldn't. But is or is that a kind of kind of a big reworking of the code base? Because I hear it's not really kind of structured like that, or to make that easy. Well, uh, if we are talking about Linden Lab co code, which most viewers are based on, it's it's really monolithic and not uh, not modular at all. You know, you have stuff like. Uh, when you first uh, look into it, you know, you, you scream in horror that, you know, <laughs> the, the, the interface components, for example, do direct network access. So if you want to change the way an IM is sent, you actually go to the piece of code that handles the, the user interface for it. So refactoring that whole code to be pluggable, I don't think it's feasible and realistic with the resources we have and the number of developers we have. And uh, we, with the, we are trying to keep as much, you know, in step with Linden Lab for the reasons I mentioned before, make stuff mm. easier to to port, you know, if, you, if your diff is not too big in, in developer terms. So it's not, it's not, the, 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 the Linden viewer is not really, I don't think we will see an uh, extensible plugin system for that. Well, I have to agree with Latif. The plugin system has a lot of merit, and, and in fact, it was done a long time ago with uh, Viewer 1.23 from Lord Greg Gregg. He'd set up a, a plugin system. And um, I mean, it has a lot of merit, but the trouble is, again, you know, 90% of our viewer is Linden code. Um, and uh, the further that we venture away from that code, the more difficult it is for us to uh, maintain and keep up with, with Second Life. Now, that, that could be a different situation if, for example, we just said, 
you know, let's just take, this is our code base right now, let's just take this and forget about keeping up with Lab from this point forward. Um, and uh, in, in that way, then we could rearrange things, and if we didn't have to stay compatible with Second Life, um, it would be easier to, to do a plug-in system. But um, I think going forward, you know, a plug-in system, although it has merit, is just very difficult to, uh, would be difficult to do, difficult to maintain, uh, difficult to... Um, even develop, uh, you could have one plugin that creates issues for, you know, with another plugin. And, and, and the other thing is, I saw Sean asking a question, and I'd like to address that. His question was um, whether OpenSim will always take a back seat to uh, Second Life. Um, and I speak for, you know, our project in, in this regard is that uh, Second Life is where the majority of our users are. Um, and uh, most people who come to OpenSim originate in Second Life. They hear about Second Life first because the, they have the the press and 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 the economy, and they have the uh, just the abundance of users. And um, and in considering that the majority of our viewer code comes from Linen Lab initially, anyways, um, at least in our case, um, until and unless Second Life um, you know explodes which could happen, um, you know, we have to at least stay compatible with Second Life. We have to at least put our, our primary focus. But that's not to say that we don't have a focus in OpenSim. Cinder is almost exclusively uh, OpenSim development for our team. I would just uh, like to add uh, regarding the plugins, you know, I think uh, one way to solve that issue would be with something like the Octopus system we have been working on where where you allow the simulator to add additional functionality to the viewer. Mm. Not functionality, the, the interface. Basically you can you can you can add items to the menu which can open dialogues, flutters and that can go a long way to adding uh, a specific, for example, you want to make a, a in-world game, and and the game could be uh, presented in such way that it adds interface elements to the viewer while you are in that region. So that would be one way of of, of at least not solving the problem, but you know, at least some use cases where extensions would be useful could be solved in that way. Yes. No, I think it's an interesting approach. I. I I I'll be very quick. I I once worked on a, a kind of a a system for uh, for a research lab, which was about water wars uh, in OpenSim, which was kind of a game. But I got around the kind of interface issue by effectively reusing the media browser to display web pages and putting it via long polling and all that kind of thing. And uh, that was interesting. It was kind of really clunky, as you can imagine, but it was the only really way to try and do a rich user interface. And I think you're right. I think actually having some stuff come from the server to say what UI should be presented makes makes this stuff more web browser-like, which is always an, an interest of mine, as you've kind of already heard. So I'd just like to say, I mean, uh, sorry. So, so uh, Nikki, uh, do, you, do you have anything to add? Finally, I think, unfortunately, we're going to have to wrap up now. But if you'd yes, like to, uh, yeah, please go ahead. Plugins in theory are really great. In practice, they are difficult to work with. And if you have a problem in a plugin, it's, it's a difficult troubleshoot. So while it sounds really good, in practice, it's not very easy to put together. And I have some experience from that just from uh, our G-Streamer plugin. As you know, we use it for streaming audio. That is a mess to get into and correct any problems. And if when someone says, oh, I got a problem with this, my heart just sinks to get into it. So <laughs> yeah. uh, plugins are great in theory, but for the viewer in practice, I don't think they're very adaptable. Okay. Okay, well, um, I'm afraid that's all we have time for here. So I'd really like to thank all our panel members for coming along. Some of them probably are not great times in the morning and on the weekend to kind of give the presentation here and, and for a very interesting panel. So please give, please give them a round of applause. Uh, thank you for having us. It's uh, been a pleasure. I'm I'm really impressed, by the way, with with this conference. You guys have done an amazing job. Yeah, yeah really no, it's great. been it's, 
it has been very very interesting to because you know we we have no idea if we're able to pull this kind of thing off and it's not it's not been perfect by any means but I think just getting getting to hearing these numbers and and this kind of thing is actually very good because I'm not a big fan of traveling so actually being able to do a virtual conference it's pretty good because you know you can get a lot more people who are interested and anyway I, I sorry I won't start rambling on that okay <laughs> yeah no well so, thanks very much and uh, definitely look forward to to what will be a very interesting future. Um, yeah, so this is the end, I think, of the uh, breakout sessions today. Um, there are a few lunchtime events. So, for instance, so for instance, the uh, at, at lunchtime, there's both the uh, the social event on uh, Avenation, which is on Expo Zone Six, and there's an interesting thing from a company. And I will admit, uh, I do know these people personally. I've actually visited them. A company called Simudine. Who have actually developed the viewer uh, used viewer code to develop some a viewer for the um, the Windows Pro uh, and using stuff stuff like the gyroscope to actually be able to move the, the view window around and kind of interesting stuff about that. So and that's happening on uh, I believe on Expo Zone Three. So once again, thanks for and thanks for everybody in the audience for attending and asking some great questions. And um, and now, uh, uh, well, also there's the uh, conference meal break, which might be more important in some respects uh, for an hour. But I'm sure uh, I'm sure if uh, if, if any of the uh, viewer devs do want to hang around, and, and just, you know, people talk to each other anyway, I don't know what I'm saying this for, but if, if they want to hang around, I'm sure, I'm sure there's uh, a lot of people interested in asking more questions and all the rest of it. So thanks very much, everybody. Yeah, thank you for oh, thank asking, you. Justin. Thanks for thank having you. me.